All right, for part three of the notes u substitution, we're going to look at some pretty complicated integrands. Now we're going to take a look at four, four examples. Uh, I encourage you guys to take any radicals and rewrite them as uh, with rational exponents, or anytime you see a fraction with an exponent to rewrite the fraction um, so that you don't have a fraction. All right, so for this particular example, it's pretty complicated. I have a sine and a cosine, but the cosine's underneath the square root. So I think what I'm going to do first of all is get rid of the radical by rewriting it with a rational exponent. So it's sine of 5x times quantity cosine 5x to the 1 half. Okay, remember, we're looking for what do we differentiate to get this expression right here? Well, I do see some exponents, which I'm thinking reverse power rule, but I also see some trig functions, so I begin to think of, okay, what are my trig derivatives? Okay, is that the outside function? Well, I know that the product sine times cosine to the one half is not a derivative of one of the six trig functions, so I kind of have to linger a little bit longer. Um, if I look at the power function one half and I study what's on the inside, if I think about letting u be cosine 5x is the derivative of cosine 5x present, you know, here, does it appear here as another factor? And it appears that it's going to. So I think we've chosen the right path to kind of begin. Okay, so if I see this power function with the trig function, I'm thinking the inside function is the trig function, not the outside function. Okay, so it appears that I'm going to be actually doing a reverse power rule if everything goes according to kind of plan. All right, if u is cosine 5x, let's find du. Using the chain rule, the outside function is cosine, that derivative is negative sine with the 5x left alone times the derivative of 5x. All right, and of course we're going to have the differential dx, but we're still not done here. So du is equal to, this derivative is 5, I will bring it in front, so my differential in u is negative 5 sine of 5x with the dx. Alright, so let's take a look back over here. If I have u to the 1 half, okay, and then this differential is sine 5x dx, I've got the sine 5x here with the dx, I just need to bring in a negative 5. I think I'm going to rewrite it though, or re, yeah, rewrite, but just rearranging it. So cosine 5x to the 1 half, I'd put it in front, and sine 5x dx behind. All right, so I've got sine 5x dx, so that would just mean I would have to bring in a constant multiplier, and we've seen that that's okay. So if I bring in negative 5, I would pull out a negative 1 fifth. I think I'm ready to convert to a u integral, so negative one-fifth integral. Okay, remember this is u to the one-half. All of this would be du. So even though I had a bunch of trig functions up here, what it really boils down to is that I am going to be integrating um, a power function. All right, so that just requires the reverse power rule. No trig derivatives. So negative one-fifth, increase the exponent to three-halves, and instead of dividing by three-halves, multiply by the reciprocal. I can multiply here. I'm going to get negative two-fifteenths, replacing u with cosine five-x to the three-halves power plus c. All right, so what started out with a bunch of uh, trig functions was interesting because the outside function with the u integral was a power function, so what we're integrating is um, a power function using the reverse power rule. There were no trig derivatives in here. Okay, you could, whew, you could look at this integrand and go, wow, that's a lot of trig there. And that's, that certainly is. Um, I guess when you start looking at it, if you see secant squared, you might want to be thinking, well, you know, that's the derivative of tangent. That might be someplace that I'm going to begin. 
Now I do see a fraction. Um, something I always try first is rewriting the fraction and not having a fraction. So I might try that approach, bringing tangent cubed up. So secant squared x times tangent to the negative 3x dx. Another way to write that is to pull the negative 3 on the outside, and that might be a better visual for us. You could likewise pull the square on the outside if you wanted to. Um, I guess, you know, right here, I'm probably not going to pull square on the outside of secant because I'm still thinking about secant squared being the derivative of tangent. So I'm going to drop the parentheses. You can have them or not. Okay, right here. I'm going to pull the negative 3 exponent off and pull it on the outside. All right, so... I mean, there's a lot of a lot of thoughts could go in here. You know, you've got a lot of exponents, a lot of trig functions. Um, I just know that this is not the derivative of one of the six trig functions, so I have to kind of come up with a different plan. And like I said, one of the things I do try and do is make any um, exponents that are in the denominator come up and get rid of the fraction. All right, um, you know, look at the power here. Uh, this would be the inside function. Uh, tangent's derivative is secant squared, which is this factor, so I think that's how I'm going to proceed. So I'm going to say, you know what, let's let u be the trig function. u is going to hold the place of the trig function. So du is secant squared x. And of course, a differential on one side requires it on the other. So maybe I should rearrange this. All right, if we think about it, we would, uh, when converting to a u integral, end up with u to the negative 3. This would be replaced with du. Can I integrate u to the negative 3 du? I certainly can using the reverse power rule. So it's interesting that there's trig functions in here, but I'm not even integrating you know, a trig function. And that's because this power function kind of overtakes. All right, so I think I'm going to convert. I have u for tangent to the negative 3 and then secant squared dx becomes du. I really uncomplicated that integrand and made it something easier to integrate using the reverse power rule. So increase the exponent by adding 1, okay, making it um, what, negative 2, divided by negative 2, plus c. Uh, I'm going to think of this as a negative 1 half multiplier, and u becomes tangent and then I have a negative 2 exponent plus c. Uh, you could also create a fraction, negative 1 over, keep the 2 in the denominator, and pull the tangent down to the denominator, and it would be a positive. If you checked your work by differentiating, you'd probably want to check it from this step here. Okay, by checking by differentiating, think about the um, chain rule. So the outside function is the power function. You would multiply, get rid of the negative 1 half, so to speak. This reduces to negative 3, which gives me this denominator, times the derivative of tangent, which gives me secant squared, which is the numerator. So you might want to spend some time checking your work just to, just to make yourself feel better that, yeah, that is the derivative. All right, for this example right here, uh, the first thing I kind of stop and look at is, um, do I have a derivative that would give me, do I have a trig function whose derivative would be cosine times sine? Well, we know of the six trig functions, none of the derivatives would produce cosine times sine. So we can't proceed that way. I don't really see any powers. Okay, so in this case, um, how to proceed. If I let u just be 2x, then I'm going to reduce this down to cosine u sine u, which again is not the derivative of one of the six trig functions. Okay, I notice that I have a product here. All right, you really have a couple choices here. If you notice cosine 2x times sine 2x, you could let u either be cosine 2x or sine 2x. I 
think I'm going to let u be sine 2x, because that derivative is pretty straightforward. All right, the derivative of sine 2x using the chain rule, derivative of the outside function, leave 2x alone, times the derivative of 2x, which is just 2, and then I need the differential here. All right, so studying what I have over here, I'm going to rearrange. Okay, um, u would be um, replacing sine 2x, so that would be u to the first, if you will, and then cosine 2x dx, we need a 2. We need a 2 here. If I bring in a 2, I pull out a 1 half. All right, converting over. This becomes u, u to the first power, all of this becomes du. And right here, this kind of stumps students. Okay, it is the reverse power rule. When students see u du, they just kind of, it kind of catches them off guard. They, they kind of pause for a minute. But remember, this is u to the first power. All right, so even though I had a bunch of trig functions here, I'm actually going to be integrating using the reverse power rule, a power function, if you will. So this becomes 1 half. Okay, times u squared divided by 2 plus c. Little cleanup, a half times a half is a fourth. My u was sine 2x. All right, and if you check by differentiating, you would get back to what you started with. Okay, so for our last example, um, pretty complicated to integrand. Um, again, I guess to proceed, my suggestion is maybe pull this out of the denominator with a negative one-half exponent. See if we can kind of identify any u substitution. I've been using x so much, I thought, well, let's just kind of, you know, mix it up here and do some thetas. Uh, so we have 4 cosine theta, oops, this should be 2 minus 6 sine theta to the negative 1 half power. And then the d theta is here. So just rewrote this as a positive 1 half and pulled it out of the denominator. Um, everything looks good right here. Yep, that's a negative exponent, good to go. Okay, a lot going on. Just you know, try um, trial and error. I see a power function, and I'm thinking, all right, the outside function's a power function. Let's kind of study this inside function on this power function. Is the derivative of 2 minus 6 sine theta, is that derivative another factor? Well, the derivative of 2, a constant, is 0. The derivative of negative 6 sine theta would be negative 6 times cosine theta. I do have the cosine theta function, okay, but maybe not negative 6, but remember it's okay for us to ma manipulate um, constant multipliers. So in this particular example, I'm thinking the inside function is what's underneath the radical. So I'm going to come over here, well I think I'm going to rewrite it here. You might have more room, but I, I don't on this, this, this page here. All right, let's go with uh, u being 2 minus 6 sine theta, seeing how it all works out. All right, the derivative here um, is 0. Okay, this is a constant multiplier, so we use the constant multiple rule for differentiation. So the derivative of sine is cosine times the negative 6. And, of course, we have d theta. All right, let's, let's rearrange this. You don't have to. This is going to be replaced with u. u to the negative one half will become a power function, reverse power rule. 4 cosine theta. Uh, I need the 4 to be a negative 6. So, 
Instead of trying to make 4 um, a negative 6 by multiplying by negative 6 over 4, which is totally acceptable, if you multiplied 4, think about that. If you multiplied 4 times negative 6 divided by 4, the 4s would cancel and give you what you need. Okay, you could do that. You could bring in that multiplier. I don't know. I just take two steps to kind of change this to negative 6, okay? Meaning I'm going to pull out the 4 and then just, uh, just work with what I need to bring in. Some of you might be looking at this going, well, that's too much work. I'm just going to multiply 4 times negative 6 for us. Well, that's fine. Different ways to handle that constant. Okay, so I need to now bring in a negative 6, which requires that I pull out a negative 1 sixth here. Okay, so you accomplish the same goal, just a different um, approach. All right, so here I'll clean this up. This is negative 2 thirds. Integral, this will be u to the negative 1 half. All of this is du. Well, a pretty complicated integral can be um, rewritten um, in a nice format using u substitution. Just a way to kind of, you know, take care of all this, this crazy stuff here. All right, reverse power rule. Even though there's trig functions, we're not doing a trig derivative or antiderivative. Um, the way we set it up, we can use reverse power rule. All right, increase the exponent by 1 to, what, positive half, divide by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. All right, uh, negative 2 thirds times 2 is negative 4 thirds. So we took care of this product, and u was 2 minus 6 sine theta. You could rewrite this expression as the square root if you wanted to, um, it doesn't matter. So that's the answer. So in, these, the, in this last video with these four problems, even though we had trig derivatives, I think that in all of them, yeah, the outside function in all of them um, was a power function. So don't, don't get locked into thinking that if you see a trig you know, function as part of the integrand that it's always going to be a trig antiderivative, because it's not, especially if there's powers on the trig functions. Okay, if there's powers on the trig functions, then likely, you know, the outside function is going to be a power function, which you'll use the reverse power rule for. So, in video one, we, we in part one, we strictly worked with outside functions being uh, power functions. In, in the second part, uh, we looked at the outside functions being trig derivatives, so we had to integrate those. And in this one, we, we combined them, but it appeared that all the outside functions were power functions in which we integrated. So... Um, now it's just time to practice.